in her 44 years in the entertainment industry. Award-winning South African actress Nekoni Chume remains in a class of her own. The legendary Chume has appeared in some of the great stage and television productions. Among those are the 2018 American superhero film Black Panther and musical film Black is King. Locally, she has appeared on Gomorrah, Zone 14, Rhythm City, to name but a few. Nekoni joins us tonight to celebrate her achievement. Nekoni, Nai can't believe this. 44 years, never. Yes, you don't look older than 30. Amen. Thank you. He compliments me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you walked in here, I had to look at you tight yeah. and say, Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. <laughs> yes. How are you, Mama? I'm so very well, thank you. Uh, it's good to, it's and good how to have about you. you. I'm good. I'm thank good. You. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Let's talk about 44 years, Mama. It's sure. For me, Yo. it feels like it's not even 44 years because when I was young, we watched you, we still watch you. Mm. Are you planning to slow down anytime soon? No, there's no slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the more I get uh, energy, it's the more I dream, you know. It's like if Begunala, where one can buy time, mm. I would buy extra time just so that I'm here because it's like... I'm beginning to have new dreams every day. Wow. And, yes. and I'm going to ask you to share those dreams with us as we continue with the conversation. But, Mama, it's 44 years. Mm. What are your reflections when you just look at your career, where you've come from? Talk to us about right now, the mindset yeah. that you're in. My mind goes back to when I started during the days of apartheid, when you wouldn't do a lead role, mm. you know, Mm. Especially when TV started, when you would also you just play the role of being a, a, a maid or you'll just be an extra. And during the times where you wouldn't eat in a certain restaurant, you wouldn't go into certain places, you wouldn't sit in the park, mm. and until where we are today. Mm. It and takes me back there. And, and when it takes you back there versus where you are now, what are your reflections? You know, my reflections are a lot has changed. Even though there's still a lot to be done. You know, um, with the coming of schools, mm. because during my time, well, it's still my time. Um, it always During time. that time <laughs> when we started, there were no drama schools for black people, for instance. Uh, we just worked in the industry because we had the, 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 the passion mm. and you had the talent and you were ready to learn. So everything that we know, most of the people my age, everything that we know, we learned from work. Mm. So, but right now, at least our kids are able to go to school, they qualify, you know, they've got better opportunities, uh, especially now that technology is also where it is. You know, they can be able to create their own jobs. They mm -hmm. can do a whole mm -hmm. lot of things. Whereas during that time, it was very difficult. You had to wait for someone to call you. Because even if you, you, you were to create your own thing, no one would consider you. Because even our own stories were written by, by white people. And Mama, was it always acting for you? Because I know that you qualified as a teacher, but... Mm. I don't see you in front of a classroom because the Mekoni I know yeah. has been, you know, as young people say, killing it, uh, you know, on the big screen. But has it always been, t uh, you know, acting for you? It hasn't always been acting, actually. Actually, it has been music. Wow. Yes. When I was growing up, I was born in Velcom in the Free State. Um, during those days, I thought that I'm going to be a, mu a musician. I'm going to sing. I remember at home, uh, there was a bench that was my stage that's why i used to stand every day and sing but anyway we were, we, were, we were a very musical family my mom used to teach us how to dance it's a zulu my mom, mother came from a kzn mm -hmm. we were that family that would entertain neighbors a stupid git that and it light as a straighten by lighter a kaya is stupid so we used to sing there and our neighbors would join us to come and sing with us so when I finished school, I always wanted that Mfunuge stage, but you know, um, it was very difficult for our parents. Mm. They think, I, Lorna, she doesn't know what she wants. Maybe she's just lazy. So that's why I ended up uh, in nursing. Mm. I, I went to do nursing in Tembisa Hospital. Uh, I didn't complete 
Then I went to Wilberforce to go and do the teaching. And when I got there, I, I met a the principal then, Ntate Mulope. I remember it was five of us who had matriculated. And he decided to give us an opportunity to go to second year instead of doing two years. Two of us, uh, two of the people that were there, the students that were there, were so afraid of doing that. And I said, you know what? I'm going for second year. So if I fail and I have to repeat to get fun, I still have to, it costs you two years. If I happen to finish it in one year, all the better mm. and all the good. So I took a chance and I did the course in one year. Wow. Yeah. Then when I finished there, I came to teach Kode Ratong, the Ratong Higher Primary School in Soweto, uh, 1976. Mm. And we all know what happened in 1976. That's when the uprising started. You know, we'll just go to school and sit there. The next thing is the police, is the guns, is all of these things. Until the following year in 1977, we used to just come and sit mm. at school. Then as we were sitting there, I saw uh, an advert that they were looking for, da for dancers, singers, um, actors. And then I had my 23 cents in my pocket, the train from Lamlangunzi to Johannesburg, maybe 23 cents. I went to the audition, and that's, ho that's <coughs> where the whole thing started. And, you know, you, you touched on so many uh, beautiful memories there for me. And I must say, the Apollo light, you know, yeah. it was a huge thing <laughs> in the township because if you like that game, yes. you know, your home becomes a center of attraction. Mm -hmm. And I'm so amazed at the fact that you used to entertain under the yeah. Apollo light. Yeah, the, my whole family, we used to entertain. Actually, some of the people that I grew up with, they still remember the songs which my mother used to teach us mm. up to this day. Mom, I'm going to ask us to pause. I, we need to go for uh, just a quick breather. But when we come back, I want us to talk about these moments, you know, these dark moments, 1976. A lot of people say for them it was a signal for change. Others say that they uh, were trying to overturn a system. But for others, I mean, it's, there's nothing to celebrate. But for you, it marked the beginning of the Mekoni we see today. Let's then uh, take a short breather. When we come back, we'll continue with this conversation. Let's continue our conversation with the internationally acclaimed actress, Mama Kwani. Mama, uh, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people, when they think back to 1976, they think back to the dark times because we know what happened and, and we cannot mm. run away from that part of our history. But for you, when you saw that advert, what made you decide that, you know what, that train of Lam Langons, I'm taking it mm. and I'm really going for this audition? Because it was something that was always burning inside of me. Like I say, it started when I was a child. Mm. And every time I saw people performing Bengisha, like Ngapagat, and I'm like, you know what, I can do that. Mm. So I think I was motivated by the fact that we, we, we were coming to school like all for, for more than a, a year, just sitting there. And I knew that this thing, there, which is advertised here, it's something that I can do, and it's something that I always wanted. But having said that, I think everything, it, it, it has time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was time already to, to get into an industry where I think God has wired me to be mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mama, then you get there um, and you're supposed to audition. Mm -hmm. When you got there, talk to us about what was happening, what was required of you to do in order for you to start a career? When business. I got there, it's, it's like a joke because everybody knew each other. You know, I'm an actor, I see musicians, all these upbeat people, and me being a teacher, I'm from school, in Fagi Hiliam with my dress, I'm like all poised there, like a teacher, people are going up and down. And then my chance came, and when my chance came, I thought, you know what, I'm a Hili, let me put them aside tucked my dress there, you know, and I did my best when it came to singing, did my best when it came to dancing, did my best when it came to acting, something that I had never done before. Mm. And at the end of the auditions, we were told that uh, they are going to call us. Uh, 
they are, they are going to have a short list, you know, and call us. And I was so naive, I didn't even know what they mean by callbacks and short lists and all that. So when everybody was going home, I went straight to the producer and I said, excuse me, sir, I'm a teacher. <laughs> so I can't be coming here every day to, you know, to audition again or to wait for the, 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 the thing that you are talking about. Can you please tell me now if I'm in or I'm out, you know? And, and my being naive helped me because... I was auditioned on the spot. Wow. On the spot, they, they said, okay, you are in. Definitely you are in. And Beguna Ma Veteran, La Panabo Sister, Klasini, and others, people who had been in the industry for a very long time. But for me, on that day, I was cast on the spot. The following day, I just went to school, straight to school, and I wrote my resignation letter. And, you know, there was a lot of um, kitaring people who were doubtful, who yeah. were discouraging me mm. to say, Kone, don't do this, you know, this industry is not stable. Mm. Here, mm. good teaching, at least you have a salary every month and what have you. I didn't hear them because here's this thing that I've always wanted. And over and above that, the salary, I'm, I was going to earn 100 rand a week, you know? Yay. Yes. It was as, that, as I remember. Opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to, 76 rand that I was oh. earning per month. And fast forward, 100 rand but is now oh, like... That was a big opportunity. 100 rand take a bag. Hmm. When I'm, I'm earning 76 rand per month, Karai, guys, and over and above that, I'm going overseas. I'm sure my 2,000 are asking themselves 100 rand take a bag. <laughs> over and above <laughs> that, it's a Maya, Koko, Kandisa, Koko, Israel, Koko, Greece. Oh, mama. Who would have, I mean, who would have said, I don't want this opportunity? During and, that time. And, and you know, one of the things that we do is that we listen to that talk of at least a stable salary without mm. following your heart. And had you yes. not done that, you wouldn't be here. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> and I wouldn't. Let's talk about, you know, that moment when the producer says to you, you are in. Yeah. And you're looking around you. I mean, get a big deal. Yeah. What, what what are you doing in that moment? Because I'm sure I would be shivering. I probably wouldn't even know in that moment. I, I don't know. I was just in another world. I was just imagining myself on that stage and performing. Because we just rehearsed in South Africa then. We performed in Greece and Israel. At that moment, I was not even thinking about these people. I was thinking about myself on stage mm. performing to for the audience. Were your parents still alive then? Yeah, yeah, my parents were still alive, but they were in Malawi. You know, my father uh, came from Malawi. My mom is from KZN. Mm -hmm. So they left, my father left with my mom to go to Malawi uh, in 1971. My father left in 71, my mother left in 1972. Mm -hmm. So my parents were not here in South Africa. And when they eventually heard, what did they say? They always knew. They always knew because even as a child, I used to be called Magunama visitor. They would call me to come and dance for the visitors or sing for the visitors. And when they say, when they say, when they sing, you were ready in an out of season. Same time. I would dance for the dance for the visitors. I would dance same time like I wouldn't waste time. So they always knew that, that that's where I'm supposed to be. And Mama, when, when you're now finding yourself on stage, um, this is something you've always wanted to do. You're excited. It's a new chapter for you. Talk to us about that experience when you now have to perform for the world because you didn't do it in South Africa, as you say. You mm. were overseas. Talk to us about, you know, that those kinds of moments every night for, you know, the, the yeah. shows. It was, it was like magic, you know. Number one, I'm, I'm on a stage outside South Africa, and I'm from an apartheid country. Mm. I'm, I'm doing what I love. I'm performing with these veterans here. And I'm, I'm free, you know, free. Mm. As in, I can go wherever I want. I can eat whatever I, wherever I want. I can do whatever I want as opposed to my own country where I cannot enter certain restaurants. I cannot do certain things. So for me, it was such a freedom. You know, freedom of my soul for being able to do what I love to do and freedom of being in a free country, if I should put it that way. And when then do you return 
to, to, to South Africa. And when you return to South Africa, what becomes then your goal? My goal. Mm. When I returned to South Africa, that was nine months later. I come back to South Africa. South Africa is still the same. Mm. In 1978, it's still the same. It's hard. Solar Solar is finished. Like I said, you know, when, when you are an actor, you are a freelancer. You are a freelancer for the mm. rest of your life. I come back to South Africa. No one knows me. There has never been any publicity about Connie Chume being in the industry. I just auditioned for this show, and there I was in Israel and Greece. When I come back, it's like I'm totally new in the business. I have to fight to, to make myself known and to make myself recognized. Now it's back to auditions again. Very hard journey between being honored and treated the way we were treated there because they were treated like stars, you know? And then you come back to your country, no one even knows you. Mm. You have to start afresh, go back to auditions, and you're still learning because you don't actually know everything. You're still learning. But fortunately, I was cast in another show, uh, Poggy and Bess. Mm. Poggy and Bess was a musical, jazz, um, opera uh, kind of show. And fortunately, like I said, I had a voice, which I still have. <laughs> I might ask you to sing for us. <laughs> well, we have to pay for that. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I auditioned yeah. Kopogi and Bess and I was cast Kopogi and Bess. So that's how the journey continues from and being cast from that to that to that. And Mama, when you come back, you are not known. In between that, Ronaldi auditions, you're fighting. Mm. Do you ever run out of money and feel like oh, you have yeah. to come back? Yes, you do teaching? run out of money. You, I mean, when you are not working, obviously, in Malia Pella, even if, even if we beg it, mm. it depends on when do you get your next job. Mm. And I remember, nah, my, my parents were not even here. Like, I, I couldn't go home and say, Ma, Nkela is saying, I had to fend, you know, to fend for myself. Did that help you in any way to not squander? Chill it when yes. you get it and actually be wise with it. It helped me a lot mm. to be able to say, okay, Connie, we are called Gama Fashion and what have you. You also want to be seen. I mean, we're young. We also want to be seen, but put something aside for rainy days. But like I say, even if you can put aside for rainy days, but it depends on now when are you getting your next job. Mm. You might mm. say, I'm looking after my money, I'm looking after it well and everything. But it depends, Horana, when are you getting the next one? Now, Mama, when the kids then come, do you slow down to take care of them? Or did you also just say, you know what, we'll grow together as my career grows? No, I didn't slow down. I've, I've never slowed down in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a slow down. You mean like, yeah. No, I haven't, like, I have never, I don't been, see you I have down, never even thought about that thing called slow down. No, they were coming. I don't know how I managed, but I would slow down a bit, Nje, and I breastfed them, you know, <clears throat> but I was still working. And I'm Either amazed. I do voices or something, but, I, like, I, I can't, even now, I can't just, can't just sit. You know, other, other, other working moms, um, especially in the industry that you're in, when they talk about being, you know, freelancers, they talk about how they lose time with their children, mm. they lose time with their families because they have to choose between this career and, um, mm. you know, spending time in Lebanon. But I'm amazed at your closeness with your children. And yeah. it, it doesn't even look like at some point they didn't even have you. And I, I just wonder how you did it all. I, I also don't know, but my children are my friends. You yeah. know, and, and, and some of them have chosen this industry. I didn't like that, but it's something which they wanted, and I had to support them. And I like it because they have seen my journey. Mm. It's, it's, it's not an easy journey, and I didn't have to cancel them a lot. So, but I realized, that, okay, this is something which they love to do, so I will just support them.
And on that note, Ma, I'd like us to just go for a quick breather because when we come back, um, you know, the guys in the gallery in my ear are saying that they want to know how you landed Black Panther because for them it appears as if that was just a moment. <laughs> yeah. That's just it. And I want to know when you're coming back. Okay. Uh, in just a moment, we continue with Mama Kony. Let's continue then our conversation with Mama Kony. Mama Kony, I know before I get to Black Panther, now I want to know when is Mama Sonto coming back? Let me just say she is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and when she comes back, is she going Definitely. to deliver Don? Is she going to deliver Tatiba Ketosak? You know what? I don't want to to <laughs> discourage you not to watch. <laughs> So just keep on watching, you'll no, find I'm out. No, I'm definitely watching because I want to see <laughs> what Mama Sonto is going to do. But it, it, let's talk about, you know, Black Panther. And uh, uh, this movie is not one that would have appealed to my generation, to your generation, but it appealed across. And, um, you know, as a result, we now hear everywhere we go Wakanda forever, mm. you know, which is something that really resonated with a lot of uh, black people who saw themselves yes. in that particular film. Talk to us about how it all came about that you found yourself having to do such a phenomenal movie. Okay. I was called by my agent to go to an audition. And that audition at that time, it was titled Motherland. Okay. So I was just given nothing, no information, nothing. I didn't know what Motherland is, where it's going to be shot. I was just told, go to an audition. Here's what you, you need to read. And I realized, okay, it's in Africa. This motherland is in Africa. And this woman here is addressing a nation. And I just decided, okay, I'm going to learn my lines and I'm going to do my best to, uh, to do this thing. And I went to the audition. Then later on, I remember that day I had been to so many auditions that when my agent called me and told me that um, I've been cast in Black Panther, I didn't even know to eat Black Panther a year because mm -hmm. I had been so many to so many auditions. Uh, but that audition, I remember that they were even auditioning men for the same role that I was auditioning for. And then I got cast in a in a in a drama series, our local drama series here. And I was already cast and I was told I'm in Black Panther. And in my mind I'm like, man, Black Panther, Black Panther must stand that movement there yeah, about Trump and Trump America, mm. you know, the black Af uh, American people who were activists, mm. you know. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. Good now, why are they auditioning it here? Maybe they want to distort the story of our brothers and sisters in America. And in my mind, I'm just thinking about that. I'm happy that I have been cast and the, sh the show is going to be done in America. But at the back of my mind, I'm not very comfortable, you know. So this one day we are sitting, eating at lunch. I didn't tell the cast that I was going to go to America. Only the, the management knew because they had to release me so that I can go and shoot. So news came. I don't know how they heard about it. And as we were sitting there, they were asking me, Hi, Mom, can we understand we are going to America? Uh, so what are you going to shoot there? Hi, I mean, I just go, oh, okay, I if I, I Black Panther. Yo, everybody just stood up and people were crazy making noise excited and I'm, I'm looking at them and i'm like but and then why what have you saw <coughs> and then one of them took out the phone and they mm. googled and they showed me my god and i saw all these names of these people and i'm like what i'm going to work in Libertoba. hey i just became numb and at that time, still, I didn't quite understand. Or Nakana Black Panther King. I'm like, I was not watching it really. So when I get home, I tell my daughter, "Would call you when I tell you, do you know who I'm gonna be working with? I'm gonna work, be working with these people." And I remember earlier that year, she had met Ulupita Essentine, mm -hmm. and she said, "Hey, ma, you know, I met Lupita, blah 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 blah." And I said, "Ah, you know what? Very soon I'm gonna be working with her." And I was just saying it. Can't you know? But 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 uh, what you say with your mouth is so powerful, you know. And uh, there I was, I was gonna work with them. <laughs> so that's how that's how it came about. I auditioned, and you know they auditioned in Africa, they auditioned in America, they auditioned, go to Caribbean islands and all of that. And I was cast. And people normally ask me, Horna, how come you got the role? Were you the best actor? And whatever. And I'm like, you know what? 
it was God's time. Mm. Because mm. Africa, they could have got someone, or America, or wherever they cast. But this time, it was for me. It was for me. It was God's time. That's how I got into it. And I tell you, when I'm sure when they even looked at you, there was no way that they could not have you. Because in addition of your name to that cast, that in and itself, it lifts it up because of who you are and what you've done for this industry. So even they should feel proud, you know, for you to be affiliated with that work. And Ma, when you then get there, I mean, Kibabo Chadwick, Kibabo Lupita, uh, people that... Boy, you Angela know, Bassett. I mean, <laughs> you know, Stella's got her groove back. But yes. I mean, people are just probably thinking, okay, now, here, but for you, it's work. You yeah. know, for you, it's work. For you, these are your colleagues for mm. however long of a time. Exactly. The reception that you then received and, and, and how were you able to navigate those waters on a daily basis? Wonderful, wonderful reception. The first day I arrived, I was called to go and fit costumes. I went with the wonderful Ruth Cutter, mm. fitted the costumes. Then they took me in a cart. Already I was like, you know, treatment tamale is so different than here at home. W you know, you are made to feel special. And then by the time you get to work, you want to do your best because of the way people respect you and the way people t treat you. And then I was taken to set. They were shooting. And the director was told, Utoke Konichume is here. Then when the chance came, he just came to me straight and he said, this is exactly who I wanted. Oh, wow. This is exactly who I wanted. You are. Because we were cast virtual, sort of like virtual. Gonzo uh, Baby's one before virtual. Uh, it's Zoom. It's Zoom. Whatever yes, it is. It wasn't yes. Zoom. Nama, I nama don't video call. Nama Skype. Yes, nama Skype. Yes, yes, yes. It was yes. done through Skype. And he said, no, no, no. This is the person that I saw, mm. and this is exactly the person that I want. And, you know, it made me feel good yeah. that even as he saw me personally, he didn't think that maybe he made a mistake. And I went, I went there even before I left home. I went there with confidence. You know, I was hanging figure la pana and feel like inferior yeah. to anyone. Yeah. I was cast amongst the many amongst many people, and the director chose me. Mm. So I didn't get there thinking that, oh, Shem, I couldn't have yeah. Angela. Uh -uh. Mm. I walked you tall. Noticed, you know, I, I walked tall. Yeah. I said, you know what, here yeah, I'm representing not just South Africa, I'm representing the whole continent. Mm. So no matter how small the role is, but it came because I'm a mining tribe elder. Yeah. You know, those roles of the elders. They are big roles. Yes. It's only that they are not written that much. So, but I thought, okay, even if I'm not saying anything at that moment, but every time, I camera my zulzula pam guam, is on to lang so. Killing mining elders. Poised. You are taking me back to that moment. Yes. Only a poised teacher. Yes, ma'am. Uilo audition. Yes, ma'am. I said I'm going to do my best. The, the whatever role that I've been given, I'm going to do my best because I'm not just here for me. I'm mm. here for me. I'm here for the South African industry. I'm here for a South African actor. Wow, Mama. And when we then look at your COVID and what it has done to the industry mm. in which you are part of, and we saw your, a lot of actors just crying out to say something just needs to mm. be done. How has this been for you? How has this time been for you? You know, I've, I've, I've been one of those fortunate ones. Let me be honest. Mm. I've mm. been one of those fortunate ones. As, as you know that I'm in Gomorrah, yes. you know. Uh, we just closed. We used to close when the levels changed. But we're not actually really, really out of, out of jobs. Yeah. You know, we're still working. But I'm aware that there were big, big problems which still exist even up to now for a lot of artists, mm -hmm. um, especially in the music industry, you know, where they cannot have gigs, yeah. they cannot gather, you know, and all of that, and people have not earned a penny up to this day as we are talking. It's been a very, very hard period for, for our industry in different, you know, in different areas of the industry. Can you believe it's almost time for us to round up our conversation? But I can't begin, I can't even end our discussion without asking you, what's next for Mamkwan? 
Uh, there are quite a couple of things that, you know, you don't want to announce things before they mm. actually happen. Mm. Um, yeah, but there are some things coming. Mm. I get a sense that they are big. <laughs> I get a sense that they are there big. There are things that Ooh, are coming. But is it another yeah. Beyonce moment? <laughs> we'll announce when we launch. <laughs> no, but Mama, honestly, I, 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 yo, I can't even uh, begin to describe a lot of what we feel tonight, especially just being in your presence. Because 44 years is not a joke. I mean, you've given your mm. industry a lot. You've given um, your time, blood, sweat, and tears. What do you say tonight to the viewers who have supported you throughout your career up until this point? Ooh, I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate them from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I know that if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am now. Even up to now, I can see the support that I'm getting mm -hmm. from my fellow countrymen. My fellow countrymen. <laughs> yes, 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 our elder. You know what? I, I re I'm really thankful for the support of my fellow people in my industry because even from them, you know, we need to support each other. If you don't give it, I can't give it back, you know. People that have helped me to go grow in the industry, my family, you know, people that are around me, the whole country as a mm. whole. I really, really appreciate each and every one of them. Mama, thank you so much for coming through and know that we continue to support you here as well on Newsroom Africa because you really are one of our icons um, in the country and we really do appreciate even taking your time tonight and just coming through to be with us. We certainly do appreciate it. That was award-winning South African and internationally acclaimed actress, Me Koni Chume. Certainly an amazing conversation that we just had.